welcome, welcome. So appreciative of you tuning in with us. Uh, I'm Warren Fogelman with Business Success Solution. I show accounting professionals how to double their income while working half the time. Today, I have a special guest, David Boatswain. David, you want to go ahead and introduce, introduce yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. My name is David Boatswain. I am from New York. I am a CPA and I own and operate Boatswain CPA PLLC. Perfect. And part of what we're talking about is some of the journey that you've been on over the past couple months. And what were things like before you and I met and started working together? All right. Well, uh, to start with, I would say that um, I collected half of the fees from my clients up front and half uh, when the job was complete, or sometimes I wouldn't get paid until I ended the project. Um, I would also provide discounts um, when clients ask because I thought that was satisfying the client and building a great relationship. Uh, I would sell individual tax return preparation services as opposed to tax packages and tax services. Um, I actually had my calendar um, open to the general public uh, by allowing anyone to book time on my calendar. Um, so that was a detriment uh, to my productivity, I would say. And, and, and so part of what I'm hearing is you were doing a lot of the traditional things that accounting and tax firms do because you felt that it was good customer service and client centered. Is that correct, David? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And so then once we started, uh, when we first met, what was it that made you decide that you wanted to look for help and maybe that you wanted us to work closely together? Uh, I mean, Basically, I knew that I had an issue with pricing. I knew that I was providing services to clients and not getting paid for it uh, because clients would reach out to me throughout the year um, asking for tax um, advice for the most part, but they were only paying for tax preparation services. Um, so I, I knew I needed to enhance my pricing and I, I'm not an expert in that. So I was seeking someone who had experience and a great track record. And I happened to run across one of your webinars and I said, that is the person. So that's how that well, worked. Well, I, I appreciate that. So uh, one of the things I hear is that you haven't had an issue with pricing. Um, can you go a little bit more as to what you felt the issue was? Was it just undercharging or were there some other things about that too? Um, I think mainly it was just the, it was the charging for the most part um, and just the packaging. Like I said, I, I knew that I was giving away a lot of services, but I wasn't being paid for it. So I didn't know how to structure a proper package or packages uh, to give uh, prospects an option. Um, and so, you know, working with you, you definitely helped me uh, prepare different packages um, and help me assess which clients belong in which package. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times when we talk about packages, it makes a lot of sense for people that do uh, monthly services or do bookkeeping. That seems obvious to them. That's out there a lot, but you mm -hmm. do primarily taxes. So can you explain what you see as the strategy for a package regarding taxes and um how that was a little bit different for you or made a difference? Yeah, it's somewhat different in that um, and it involved a lot of creativity as well. So, um, you know, on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, depending on the package, um, I can meet with clients to discuss any top of mind questions that they have. So that's kind of a new feature that we added. Um, we also provide uh, quarterly tax projections or semi annual tax projections, um, depending on the package that one selects. Um, we also can call the IRS with clients and offer, you know, um, different various packages or services like that, I should say. Um, of course, there's accuracy guarantee, um, right. there's diagnostics and things to that effect. Yeah, so just, really just depending on the package that they select. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so one of the things that I hear about the package is that we created together is that we understand that you have different types of clients and some clients have different needs. Uh, there are some that just need the essentials regarding tax compliance, but others might want more of that advice and you didn't want to give it away for free. 
And then right. there are others that are very uh, tax savvy and want to get the best advantage possible and, and know that working more closely with you will help to give them that tax advantage. Does that kind of sum it up a little bit? It does. Absolutely. Yeah. But but one of the things I, I want to reiterate is that because we were able to bundle certain services together, you no longer give away your advice for free. Is that correct? Absolutely, Absolutely correct. Great, great. So how long did you think about possibly raising the fees for your clients before you actually did something? Uh, I would say about a year to two. Um, and, and that was me thinking about creating a package for my client for the most part. Uh, so about a year or two, I was thinking about creating a package. And did you feel that there were any obstacles that you had to deal with as you were making a decision as to whether we were to work together or not? Um, no obstacles, really. I mean, um, you know, at first it was in the price, um, you know, we discussed, but, you know, within 24 hours, I made up my mind because I felt very comfortable with you and I figured it was now or never actually. So, um, and, and you assured me, um, by saying, you know, uh, within three months, you make back your investment, um, which I could attest to and, you know, which is why I'm here as well today. So definitely appreciate that. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that because it's actually not a question I usually ask, but um, I, I think that it's important to recognize that this is definitely an investment as opposed to an expense. And I want you to make money because of our work together. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Um, are there any specific strategies that you see you put into play which actually help to grow your bank account and possibly also free up your time? Yeah, uh, for one, as I mentioned, getting paid up front. Uh, before I wasn't getting paid up front, now I am. I don't do any work before I get paid, uh, which has a great impact on the bank account. Um, creating the three tier tax packages. Um, charging for diagnostics. So I, if I have to assess someone's tax situation, like if they haven't filed for multiple years, then I actually charge for that. Um, and setting a minimum price on uh, just basic tax preparation. So if we happen to have someone who really doesn't fit into a package and we're just doing a standalone tax preparation service, which we try to stay away from, uh, we just set a bottom line price for that. And one of the things that uh, as far as the diagnostic goes is, a lot of times bookkeepers will do a diagnostic before they start doing the financials for a new client, but doing it for a tax firm is not as typical. So can you explain how you're getting paid for that diagnostic and looking over their taxes? How, how does that work and, and what do you see as the benefits of it? Um, well, yeah, I could give you an example, actually. Uh, so recently someone approached me because they had three years of tax returns that they needed to prepare and they had um, taxes that they owed to the IRS. They had a tax liability from previous years as well. Um, they didn't understand um, all of the documents that were sent to the IRS on their behalf, or they weren't aware of all of the income that they made for the past three years. So, you know, I got transcripts from the IRS, I got their records from the IRS, and I assessed exactly what was submitted on as revenue on their behalf. And, um, and I assess what needs to be done. And I charged the client uh, for that particular service about $850. And it took maybe about two hours to assess the overall situation. But it really was the value in uh, informing the client of their overall situation, like letting them know exactly what they owe the IRS, um, you know, what days they have or how many how much time they have to actually file a tax return uh, before they could get a refund or incur additional penalties. And just providing that, that peace of mind, um, you know, someone knowing that or prospect knowing that there's someone in their corner that could help them with their tax situation and have them become compliant once again. Um, and so that's how I um, charge for the diagnostic. Now, before we started working together and putting this in place, how would you have assessed that tax situation beforehand and would you have gotten paid for it? Uh, no, so I would have assessed the tax situation, but I would have done it for free uh, with the mindset of, you know what, I'm going to get paid from actually preparing the tax return. So that was a 
definitely a new revenue stream for me. Okay, so by doing a paid diagnostic, you created a new stream of revenue. It also mm-hmm. lets you do a thorough assessment as to what's going on. Does it affect, because you're able to do that thorough assessment, does it affect what you charge for the actual work being done now? Um, Absolutely, because I understand what the pain points are, and that's how I charge based on value. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I'm able to provide my expertise and provide advisory services um, and, and charge for that and not just charge for the preparation of the tax return. So, so basically what I'm hearing is that you were able to increase your fees because you're really leading with the advisory part of it. It's not just about which forms you're filing or how much time it takes you to prepare it. That's correct. Right. And you're starting to go a little bit into how you analyze and quote a project for value instead of time. Can you expand upon that a little bit, David? Yeah, sure. So in this particular example as well, um, So the IRS uh, gave a freebie um, recently, whereby uh, if you filed your 2019 and 2020 tax return by a particular date, they would waive the late filing penalty. Um, I knew that, the client didn't know that, but uh, so for me to get the tax return done by that particular time deadline, I would save the client thousands of dollars, right? That's a value add. Uh, And because of that value that was added, I charged the client additional for that. Um, So I pretty much like tripled their fees um, just by providing that extra value. And I explained to them, too, if we get it done by this deadline, then you would save X amount on your taxes, um, which they did. And they appreciated that. And for that reason, there was no pushback in terms of prices. Okay, so then part of what I'm hearing, because you are the tax expert, when clients are coming to you, you were able to show them that there was the short window of time to really save on the penalties. And as a result of that, they they were happy to pay your fees, even though it might have been higher than if they would have gone somewhere else, because they knew that you were going to give them other advantages, and you really were looking out for their best interest. That's correct. And the, the example that I'm giving you, uh, that's the same client that I charge $850 for the diagnostic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So there's a lot of value there and the, the nice price for that project. Right, right. The the other part that I'm really uh, wanting to uncover with that is the clients that are just looking for the cheapest option. They, they're mm-hmm. not ever going to pay for paid diagnostics. So it's actually saving you from talking with those price sensitive clients. Have you noticed a difference in the clients that you're onboarding because of that? Absolutely. Um, It's funny that you mentioned that because yesterday someone called me, they had the same issue where they didn't file a tax return in a number of years. Um, And basically what I was hearing, their situation was a little less complicated. So I quoted them about $600 to do the diagnostic to obtain all their records, to analyze it and to have a consultation with them. Um, and they were reluctant to proceed further. You know, they said that they would give me a call back, but I got the tone that, you know, that was too much for them. And they even made a mention of it. They said, well, wow, that's just for the diagnostic. That doesn't even include tax preparation. And I was like, yes, that is correct. Um, so that is a price sensitive client and a client who does not understand the full value. So that client is not a good fit for our firm. And I'm fine with that. Um, So we have to disqualify clients or prospects the same way as we qualify them. So I'm fine with that. And and that's really an up-leveling move, David, that I want to acknowledge that you've taken along this journey as you've gone from uh, getting paid after the fact, uh, discounting your fees that they asked for, and, and now you're really comfortable with the fees you charge because you understand the value isn't just about the filing. Right. It's no longer a numbers game where you want a lot of clients and and have that factory approach. Now you really want to work at a higher level with your clients, having them uh, focus on the strategies and the advisory parts as well. And that's absolutely correct. So that helps with the quality of life. Mm -hmm. I realized that my revenue increased, it doubled for the year. It was projected to be doubled this year, but my client base hasn't grown with respect to numbers. Right. So I have about the same number of clients, 
but my revenue has doubled. And that's because I got rid of a lot of uh, price sensitive clients and I took on more clients who would appreciate the value and who are not reluctant to pay for value. Mm -hmm. And and, and that's so important because um, it's not always something that I emphasize, but by being able to increase your revenues without having to have any additional clients, it gives you back your personal life and improves your quality of life also. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a game changer. Absolutely. Uh, Are there any maybe personal challenges or hurdles you had to face or overcome as you were moving in this direction? Um, I would say uh, increasing prices on my legacy clients or, you know, doubling their prices or significantly increasing it. Uh, That was a challenge just because they've been with me for a number of years. uh, And, you know, I like them, uh, the ones in particular that I was worried about increasing their prices. Uh, But to overcome that, um, you know, I just uh, implemented a two-year strategy where I increased their prices, you know, by... 50% 50% this year, and I will another 50% next year. Perfect. And 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 I think that that's really uh, an advanced tip that you're sharing. And, and I hope that someone's able to really take it for inspiration was that instead of just pushing away your, client, your older legacy clients, because there's now a gap between your current rates and what they're paying you, you, you are able to gradually grandfather them in over two years, but then by next tax season, everybody will be on the same pricing model. Correct. And now that you know how to value price your services, what what do you see that's different maybe in your business or even in your personal life? Um, Well, as I mentioned, the revenue has doubled uh, this year and uh, my client base is relatively flat. So um, I'm projecting over the next couple of years for that client base to stay flat or to even decrease and for the revenue per client to increase significantly um, so I could have, you know, great quality of life, I should say. Mm -hmm. So as you're adding more free time onto your calendar, what are some things that you're doing to take care of, better care of yourself? What have you noticed? Um, well, traveling more, trying to travel more. Um, my my schedule is um, still kind of busy, but uh, what I'm doing a lot now is focusing more on the business. So I'm taking that time away from, you know, services to focus on the business. Hmm. I'm still a workaholic in a sense, but I'm just, you know, changing where I put my time. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So you're really moving away from the technical aspects of what your firm offers and focusing more on the high level advisory and consulting part of it. Right. Anything else that you feel is important to mention that maybe we overlooked? Um, I mean, well, one of the things that you always say is that your fees are not suggested prices. And that's something that I take away with me. Um, You know, know your value and uh, don't negotiate your fees. Um, so that's, that's very important. That's a model that I live by now. That, that's a big mindset change. So uh, it really acknowledges the fact that you're not looking to compete with the low price competitors that are out there. You're, you're really able to stand on your own two feet and that you found a way to be able to differentiate yourself because you lead with the consulting and you happen to do the tax compliance along with it. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, David, I know that you inspired some people today. (laughs) If somebody wants to get in touch with you, talk further, what's the best way for them to reach you? Well, so you can email me or call me. My email address is david at Boatswain CPA, uh, which is spelled B-O-A-T-S-W-A-I-N-C-P-A.com or call me at 718-804-0377. David, thank you so much for the inspiring conversation. Lauren Coleman, showing accounting professionals how to double their revenues, working half the time.